Welcome back everyone. Today we'll recap a 1998 slasher film named Urban Legend. When a series of murders take place in and around her university, Natalie begins to suspect that the deaths are inspired by various urban legends. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Pendleton University student Michelle Mancini, who is driving somewhere during the night in heavy stormy rain. She sees that her car is running out of fuel so she goes to a gas station where she can't see anyone. A little while after, a weird man comes near the window of her car, who is stuttering. Michelle gives him a credit card and asks him to fill in the fuel. The man notices something strange in her car and tells her that he has received a call from her credit card company inside. When Michelle comes inside to attend the call, the man comes after her and locks the door. Here Michelle finds out that no one is on the call. The man wanted to tell her something, but Michelle does not listen to him and after spraying his eyes, she breaks the window and leaves from there. The man comes after her and tries hard to stop her but she does not stop. Then we get to know that the man wanted to tell her that there is someone in the back seat of her car. After going a little further, the man in the back seat kills Michelle by severing her head with an axe. Meanwhile, at the campus coffee shop, Student Parker regales friends Natalie and Brenda with a story about a massacre that occurred in Stanley Hall, an abandoned dormitory. But journalism student Paul discredits this as an urban legend. According to Parker's story, 25 years ago there used to be a professor who had lost control over himself. He took a hunting knife to Stanley Hall and knocked on all the doors. Any student who opened the door, the professor slit their throat and finally killed himself with the same knife. After this Natalie and Brenda go to Stanley Hall and talk among themselves saying that if the students were dead here, why was it not broken and they thought it might be an urban legend? Then they go in front of the hall door and say Bloody Mary five times and nothing happens, and they find it funny. But then they start getting some voices from inside and fearing both of them start leaving from there. Then Damon comes there from behind and they think that he was scaring them. News of Michelle's murder quickly spreads the following day but Dean Adams and campus police officeries seem determined to bury the story because they want it to save the university's reputation. In the next scene, all those friends are in the coffee shop where news of Michelle's murder is going on. Sasha says that Michelle was listening to her radio show at the time and Brenda thinks that someone crazy is roaming around the campus, and Natalie is deeply disturbed by this news. Then later when she comes to her room, she learns that her roommate Tosh takes lithium tablets. Then she starts watching her high school album, in which we see Michelle with Natalie. Just then, Damon comes over to invite Natalie for a hangout and consoles her to see her sat. He takes her with him to a deserted place where Natalie tells him that Michelle was her friend, to which Damon says he can understand because he too lost his girlfriend. He then starts flirting with Natalie but she rejects his sexual advances. Damon then goes outside to urinate where he is attacked by an assailant in a hooded parka. When Natalie comes out of the car, she also sees the man scared of whom she goes back to the car but the car does not start. The man hung Damon from a tree and he ties the other end of the rope to the back of the car. Then he starts hitting the roof of the car with an axe, fearing that Natalie drives the car and Damon dies by hanging. Then when his body falls on top of the car, Natalie flees to retrieve help, but Damon's body and car have disappeared when she returns with Officer Reese. Natalie thinks that Michelle's murderer must have done all this, but Reese refutes her. In the next scene, Natalie tells all this to her friends, to which Parker says that Damon must have pranked her because he is the biggest jokester on the campus and he has done all this under inspiration from an urban legend. Natalie felt that someone was turning those urban legends into reality but no one believed her words. After this, Natalie goes to the library and takes out the book of urban legends where she finds Sasha and the two start reading that book together. They find the story of that car and the story of a gang roaming the road at night. Natalie sees that this book was issued by Damon last time. Here Tosh is chatting with a boy in the room. She asks him for a makeout and asks which room is he in? To which the reply comes in her room. Then someone attacks her from behind and then Natalie comes into the room. But she feels that Tosh is making out with someone as usual. So she falls asleep on her bed and that killer kills Tosh. Natalie finds Tosh's body in the morning, along with a message scrawled in blood on the wall. That aren't you glad you didn't turn on the light? Then Dean Adams and Reese investigate her and they thought that Tosh had committed suicide. Now Natalie was getting very upset by all this and Paul is investigating Mitchell's murder, in which he learns that Michelle was Natalie's high school friend and he talks to her about it. 
Natalie tells him that Damon and Tosh have been murdered like Michelle. Some serial killer is killing people like those urban legends and today is the 25th anniversary of the Stanley Hall massacre. Paul says that if that incident is true, then it will definitely be mentioned in the history book of the university. On checking in the library, they do not find history books for two years, so they ask the janitor working there, who tells them to talk to Professor Wexler about it. Then they both go to Professor Wexler's room where they find an axe and that killer hoodie. They start doubting the professor and only then does the professor come there. In the next scene, we see them in Dean Adams' office where Adams tells Natalie that he knows she has a criminal record and tells Paul that he too has been fired by the magazine editor. Paul then asks Natalie about the criminal record but she doesn't tell him anything. Then Natalie goes to Brenda who is swimming. Natalie sees someone there who she thinks is the same killer but she is some other girl. Natalie confides to Brenda that Michelle was her high school friend and that the two had received probation for causing a fatal car accident after driving with their headlights turned off and pursuing the first driver who flashed them. Paul meanwhile investigates local urban legends and discovers that the Stanley Hall massacre was in fact real. And Professor Wexler, a professor of American folklore, was its only survivor. This clipping was placed there by the janitor on his table. We then see Dean Adams in the parking lot where Reese comes up to him and tells him that they should hire a guard. Says there are a lot of issues on the campus and Damon has also been missing for a long time. But Dean tries to avoid it by saying that Damon has gone on vacation and she should not contact his family members. Reese then leaves. After which the killer cuts off Adams' leg from under the car and then crushes him to death. Meanwhile, Natalie, Brenda, and Sasha attend a fraternity party coinciding the massacre's 25th anniversary. There. Paul tells Natalie about Professor Wexler, whom she is horrified to hear, and then Paul consoles her, after which they kiss. Just then Brenda comes there and she gets very angry and upset seeing this. Here Reese hears a voice from Wester's room on campus and she finds it in disarray and covered in blood. Here Paul tells everyone that there is a killer on campus but no one believes him and Parkos makes fun of him. Paul and Sasha then leave the party. Later, Parker gets a call that he is going to die tonight. He sees that the call has come from inside the house and in the name of Damon. He thinks that Damon is pranking the urban legend of the babysitter and goes upstairs to check. Then the caller says that this story is not of the babysitter but of the microwave. Hearing this, Parker opens the microwave and it is full of blood. Seeing this, Parker runs towards the bathroom where the killer catches him, ties him up, and murders him by forcing pop rocks and bathroom chemicals down his throat. Here Sasha is hosting a late night talk show on the campus radio station when she and her assistant are attacked by the killer, and her screams are played live on air. The fraternity partigars assume it is a prank referencing the massacre, but Natalie fears Sasha is in danger. She rushes to the station, where she witnesses the killer murder Sasha with an axe. Natalie soon finds Paul and she tells him about Sasha's murder. She starts doubting Paul but he asks her to leave. Outside they also meet Brenda and Paul convinced that Wexler is responsible, and escorts them away in his car. They stop at a gas station, and while Paul is inside, Natalie and Brenda find Wexler's mutilated body in the trunk. Seeing this, they flee through the woods back toward campus as Paul pursues them. A little further, they become separated, and Natalie hears Brenda's screams. Natalie flags down the university's janitor passing by in his truck. He picks her up, but there she sees a killer hoodie and tries to get off the vehicle, but the janitor stops her. Just then a car starts following their car, and their car is forced off the road by the killer. The crash kills the janitor, but Natalie leaves unscathed and flees on foot. In the building, she finds her friend's corpses in every room, along with an apparently dead Brenda outstretched on a bed. However, Brenda knocks Natalie unconscious moments later. When Natalie comes to her senses, Brenda reveals herself as the killer, enacting revenge for her fiancé David Evans the fatality in the road accident Natalie and Michelle caused. Brenda attempts to remove Natalie's kidney but is thwarted when Reese arrives and holds Brenda at gunpoint. Brenda manages to stab Reese with a switchblade and picks up her gun, and Paul comes upon the scene and tries to take the gun from her. At the same time, Reese shoots Brenda in the arm, causing the gun to fall from her hand. Natalie gains control of the gun and shoots Brenda, who falls out a window. Natalie and Paul leave to get help for Reese. As they drive away, the two talk about how this will later be an urban legend, and all the facts will be misconstrued. Paul asks, well if this is an urban legend, where is the twist? Brenda then appears in the back seat and attacks them with an axe. Paul crashes the car on a bridge, causing Brenda to go through the windshield and into the river below. 
Later, a group of students at a different university have recounted the events of Brenda's killing spree, during which they say that her body was never discovered. Most of them disbelieve the tale with the exception of one young woman, who was revealed to be Brenda. She claims that the story was incorrectly told, and begins to tell them how the story really goes. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to never miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.